All right, in this lesson, we're going to be creating a document together so that you guys can start um, creating the next project in these assignments, which will be uh, a theming of your own personal Monopoly game. So the first thing we're going to start off with is obviously creating a document in Photoshop. So in Photoshop, we created a new document. Uh, we're going to name this Personal Monopoly. Uh, the width of this is going to be in pixels. Please make sure that you have pixels selected, not inches. So we're selecting pixels. Uh, this is going to be 9,600 pixels wide by 9,600 pixels tall. Our resolution is going to be 300 pixels per inch. And our color mode is CMYK. Remember, CMYK is for print-based ink and paper uh, versus screen-based. Screen-based is RGB. So again, this is print-based CMYK. So this is going to give us a fairly large... Uh, document with high resolution using that CMYK color mode. We're going to click create and that's going to create our document. Now before we started we did download this image which is the Monopoly background image so make sure that you go to my learning this week's module and then you're going to download that image because we're going to bring that in here uh, in a little bit. So here we have a canvas uh, and within this single PSD document we're going to create multiple artboards. So if you remember from a couple weeks ago we talked about artboards, and now we're going to practice that a little bit more in depth with this particular project, and I'm going to get you started with that. So here we go. We're going to start by clicking on Layer, New, and Artboard. And then this is going to bring up the screen where we can now name our artboard. In this case, we're going to work with the first part that we opened up already, which is our canvas, which is at 9,600 pixels by 9,600 pixels. We'll call this Game Board the name of this artboard and we'll keep the width and height of this uh, intact. So there we go. Um, so now instantly what you should see is uh, in the upper left hand corner of your canvas you should now see where it says game board and if you look over at your layers panel, minimize my property, if you look at your layers panel I now have uh, an artboard there again labeled game board. All right so now we need to go ahead and create the other artboards for this document. So if you remember uh, what Monopoly looks like, and I'll go ahead and bring uh, an image in here so that you can see. So there's a themed version of Star Wars Monopoly. Uh, there's also a Mar Super Mario Monopoly. We also have Game of Thrones and Disney. So basically this is what you guys are going to be doing. You're going to be creating your own themed version of Monopoly. And we're not going to go as detailed as far as the dice and the little characters, but we are going to at least themize the board itself. Uh, we're going to create the money units that they use in Monopoly, and then we'll create three of these uh, player cards that you guys collect, which I think if you break it down into categories, there are properties, utilities, and then, of course, lastly, the railroads. So, And again, you call it what you want, uh, but you'll be uh, themizing or theming out those elements for this game. So uh, we have the game board. Let's go ahead and create our monetary units, right? So... Again, layer, new, and artboard. Uh, we'll call this, we'll just call this money one. Because that's, you know, the one dollar bill, if you will. Uh, and then for the parameters of this, we're going to set this at 926 pixels wide by 1972 pixels wide. Click OK. And at first, I won't see that artboard, but if I zoom out, well, there it is way over here on the right hand side. So with my move tool shortcut V or the four arrows that's in the upper left hand corner of your tools toolbar, uh, again shortcut V, uh, I'm going to click on the name money one and this is going to allow me to actually move this over. So there we go. Just to get this a little bit closer in proximity, control zero to zoom back in, control minus to zoom out just a little bit. And with that same move tool, shortcut V again, uh, if I click on Money One, I can see that I get these little plus symbols, which allows me to replicate or copy those artboards. And we're going to do that six more times. So there we go. And then we'll move these artboards down just a little bit so that we can see the names. And then we'll name them. We'll name them accordingly. So Artboard One, uh, we'll go ahead and name uh, Money-5. Artboard 2, we'll name Money 10. Artboard 3, we'll name Money 20. 
and then artboard four. I'm just going in, in order there. So artboard four will be money dash fifty. And then artboard five is going to be money one hundred. And then the last artboard there, artboard six, will do money dash five hundred. There we go. All right. So there are our artboards, and then of course, lastly, we, we need those other three uh, categories: so properties, utilities, and railroads. So again, we'll go ahead and click on Layer, New, Artboard, and then we'll go ahead and name this artboard Properties. And then for its dimensions, we'll set this at 1,200 pixels by 1,200 pixels. And again, with the Move tool, we'll move this down a little bit, and then also replicate this two more times. And then we'll call artboard one. We'll call this utilities. And then artboard two, we'll call railroads. All right. So now we have our document, and now it's just a matter of creating, right? So again, we're going to bring in that document that we had downloaded earlier. So we're going to click on that layer background we're going to drag it over to our personal monopoly documents and then we'll drop it right on top of our canvas there control t again this is nothing new we've already learned about this in other lessons so i'm not teaching anything new here we're just kind of putting it all together so control t to transform i'm going to check my proportionality so at the top on my tools option bar i see width and height i'm going to click on the little chain link to make sure that that stays proportionally correct or intact and now i'll just click and drag this out to make it a little bigger. It doesn't have to be perfect, but just somewhere in there so that we can use it as a guide. Like it, we're going to hit enter or check mark to accept those settings. <clears throat> and then just like the wolf edit that we did last week, um, we, we're going to change the opacity of this layer one, which is our background tool, right? Uh, remember, we are working on the game board artboard. So with layer one in the game board artboard, we're going to go ahead and change the opacity down to about 20%. And then I'm also going to lock this layer because I don't want to accidentally use it, or right? So this is just, it's just there as a guide. And from here, it's just creating, right? So what do I need to do to create these? Lots of different things. I could paintbrush it. Uh, I think that would be extremely hard. Um, so why not use, let's use the rectangle tool. So I'm going to grab my rectangle tool. I'm going to zoom in here just a little bit. And I'll just go ahead and create this with a fill of white, create a black stroke. I'll set that to 10 pixels, and then I'll just click, and I'll just create that rectangle, or in this case, a square. Back out just a little bit. Looking good. So this is going to be like the skeletal structure of my board, right? So I'll hit uh, Escape, uh, V for the Move tool. I'll go ahead and select this. Let me minimize this properly. So... I have rectangle one selected, control C to copy, control V to paste, and then I'll just move this guy over here, align him right next to him, control T, and then the proportionalities are have been locked, so I want to change that, right? So uncheck mark or unclick the little link, and now I can sh make this a little skinnier, right about there. Hit enter to accept, control C, control V after I select it. And I'm just lining these guys up. Control, control V. 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 Now, as I'm doing this, you're probably noticing I get these pink lines on my screen and these are what are called smart guides and I want to talk a little bit about some of the things that you need to know for the industry certification exam uh, and that is one the user interface preferences as well as using some visual aids such as rulers and guides and whatnot I'm going to use control zero to snap out of here so let's start with preferences first so if I click on edit and preferences I can see all of those categories here so don't be surprised if on the test you get a question that asks you to change the guides, grids, or slices, or change the units and rulers, or change the cursors, 
or do something in the interface or workspace, right? So all of this can be accessed from the preferences option, from edit preferences, or you can go straight to general or shortcut control K. And all of those categories are going to be right there. So there's your units and rulers. There's your guides, grids, and slices. There's your general interfaces, workspace, et cetera. So if you're asked to do something as far as changing the preferences within Photoshop, that's where you would go for that. Some visual aids. Um, you may notice that on my screen uh, at the top in the left, I have this ruler here. Okay, uh, And these rulers are set up uh, by inches. So here's the zero, right? So all the way across is 32 inches. Um, and it just, it just helps me understand where things are uh, in relation to space. Um, I can also, from these rulers, I can click and drag uh, and create these guides to help me uh, as I am creating, whether it's from the vertical uh, ruler or the horizontal ruler. I can bring these guides in uh, to help me create uh, my document. Now, how do I control this visually? Well, if I click on View, uh, there I can create a new guide. So don't be surprised if you're asked to create a new guide based on horizontal and position at 10 inches, right? So uh, that's kind of some of the things that you'll be asked in the initial certification exam. Uh, you may also be asked to clear those guides. So here's clear guides. Uh, also notice that as I'm working with the game board uh, artboard, these guides are not showing up on my other artboard. So if I go over here and I click on money one, notice that I don't see those guides. But if I come back to game board, those guides show up. So those guides are very specific to artboards. And if I ever want to clear them, I can click view, clear guides, or clear selected artboard guides, whatever you want to use. Uh, and then also, as I was saying earlier, um, showing, right? So I can show my smart guides, which were those pink things that were kind of uh, jumping out. So as I was moving those elements around the screen, I saw those pink lines. And that's done uh, by looking at view, show, and smart guides. So if you don't like them, you can uncheck, uncheck mark smart guides and they'll go away. I can also bring up grids, which will help me line things. Um, so it's just, it's there to help you create. You don't have to use them. They are there. <clears throat> don't be surprised if you get asked that question or prompted to do that task uh, in showing guides or clearing guides or showing the grid, etc. So just wanted to touch on that real quick. All right, back to our document. So um, so yeah, so you're just basically creating these these shapes to create your, your your board, right, or whatever it is that you need to see visually. So as I make that um, background layer that I was using as a guide, if you will, as, as made it opa uh, opaque um, and locked it, right. If I as I make that go away, I'm left with just uh, my board here. So as I continue to work, um, you're going to be creating hundreds, if not thousands, of these layers, and it's going to be important that you manage these. So don't forget. As we've mentioned in lessons previous, um, right? So, like, obviously, I can uh, make my artboard game board uh, go away by clicking on that little arrow, uh, but I can also group these elements. So, by clicking on my top layer here in game board, scrolling down to the bottom and holding shift, I can click on this other rectangle that selects that range. And at the bottom, I can click on the folder and that will group them, right? So, now I can say, I don't know, maybe this is the left upper corner. Right? And now I can just work with just those elements, right? Um, so this is uh, the document setup. Uh, th I've kind of pushed you in that direction. Um, so good luck, and I look forward to seeing what you guys uh, create.